Assalamu alaikum. I was asked to do a TAM or beret demonstration video and upload it on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to do that for some of my sisters back in California. The TAM usually has about two or three pieces, uh, mostly three. I, I only do them with three um, unless somebody specifies that they want to. Uh, it's very simple to make. It takes all of 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm getting ready to upload a demonstration of that video. Hope you enjoy. Good luck with your projects and let me see what you do. Piece. You have three pieces, the top, and I don't know what this is called, I'm just going to say the crown, and then you have the band. Uh, and the only thing you interface is the band because that's what needs to have a little body or stiffness to it because that's what goes around your head. I use fusible tree code. You can use any kind of fusible or sewing interfacing that you want to. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Some of us, you know, have a thing about making it perfect. I do in a sense, but not right here I don't. So you put your interfacing on and make sure you cover it with a press cloth. I think in some of my demonstrations I had this same piece of silk organza and as you see it's so worn and you just press according to the manufacturer's instructions for fusible interfacing or sewing interfacing so I'm gonna press that in after you finish that that was the selvage edge of the interfacing it doesn't have any glue but it's still gonna work then you um, fold it in half this is the band Fold it in half. Now this measurement is going to be about, um, if you don't want any elastic in the back, this is going to be about your head circumference measurement plus some ease, maybe an inch of ease. If you wear braids and hairstyles that are more fuller, then you might need more ease. But if you're going to have it um, with some elastic in the back, you can probably go a couple of inches more larger than your head circumference. So now we're started and we're probably 15 minutes away from being complete. Okay, after I put that crease in, because it's easier to crease when things are flat as opposed to when there is in a circle, I'm going to stitch in a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance because for this particular pattern that's um, what it called for. Sometimes if I make my own patterns, it'll be a half inch. You trim the seam allowances. You can press them open. I sometimes just finger press to save myself time. Fold it where that fold was. And then you're going to top stitch the very bottom because you want the band of your Fez or beret or tam, whatever you call it, to be really, you know, nice and crisp. So you're just going to edge stitch the bottom right along the edge. strings off you're going to make that back um, a, um, seam in the little crown part or whatever you call it now at this point um, depending on the fabric or who you're making it for you can um, serge this or finish the edge however you want um, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I searched that back um, seam allowance and then you press it to one side. I don't necessarily want to press it, so I'm just going to top stitch it or edge stitch it to hold it in place. Either way is fine. And then you, on the top of your tam, when you cut out the circle, they had a notch for the front and the back 
it's just a circle so it's exactly the same so you want to put right sides together and match up that back seam with um, one of the notches and then the fronts you want to match up and then you um, just pin in place around this circle to where the edges are even or pretty much even if it's off a hair or two or three it's really okay you just don't want any puckers I normally do not pin this much maybe four pins okay and then you sew around your seam allowance connect back to the original stitching take your pins out and you're going to go take this to your serger and serge around the edge. Because you don't want a big seam allowance right here because um, you won't be able to press this open or press it flat. And what I do, I don't even press it. I used to, but it took too much because I used to have to put a tailor's ham in here and press it. Now what I do is just edge stitch. Since I edge stitch this, I edge stitch this, I'm going to edge stitch that and make it all just seem like it was on purpose. So, as I'm going through, I'm pushing the seam allowance up toward the top or the crown part, well, the top. And then I'm just kind of spreading it apart. You can zoom in. I'm kind of spreading it apart and just sewing right along the edge. And as long as you're around the edge, you're gonna be even because it feels like you're sewing crooked but in the end you'll see that if you're along the edge it's going to be on the edge but sometimes around those curves it feels crooked just make sure with my thumb I'm pushing that seam allowance to the top of the tam and then I'm pulling it apart this you don't have to iron this it, it, it you know prevents in the future from you having to iron a lot uh, and I've just found over the years that this system works the best for me and my clients I haven't gotten any complaints so far that's a good thing I strive hard to not have any complaints Almost done. Really gives you a more professional, cleaner finish. And then I just um, clip the threads. And as you see, we're almost done. I guess this next part would be considered the hardest, but see? that makes the seam stay up there nice all right so now I'm gonna put the band on so with right sides together I'm gonna to match up the back put a pin there and this particular um, tam has elastic so I'm gonna show you what to do in the back I'm gonna match up my fronts Ooh, I didn't clip it so I'll do that now clipping a mark for the front to where to match it. I neglected to do that when I took the pattern piece off. So I matched that up. 
Okay, so I didn't clip where you stop for the elastic. I know the elastic is about this much and it's only because I've done it for so long. So I'm gonna put a pin about there and another one here on the other side. That's where I'm gonna stop sewing. I'm gonna sew the rest of this together. You see I'm really using all of my fingers to make sure there's no puckers or anything on the bottom side so I know it matches about here and I'm using all these fingers to make sure no puckers form on the other side when I'm pinning and I'm gonna spread this I'm using my fingers underneath to make sure the fabric is not puckered now watch me get a pucker Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes if the back is a little more shorter, you clip into the shorter piece, which allows it to spread like this. I'm not, I could just pull it and it fits, but sometimes you make little, they're like relief clips to make it lay flat. Okay, so I'm going to sew the whole thing, all pieces together from, I'm going to leave this open because I need to insert my elastic. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to backstitch. And as I'm sewing, I'm kind of pulling this bottom one to make sure I don't have any puckers under there. I'm kind of pulling it and spreading it apart. Sometimes they come and I'll take it out and do it again. But you kind of pull and spread the bottom as you're going to ensure that no puckers are underneath there and if you have a pucker it's no big deal just take it out and do it again or take it out in that little section and just do it again or if you're impatient you just keep it there but it's not going to go anywhere you're not going to be able to press it out so if it's good for you it's good for me but that's not the correct way. Okay, so I can see on my back side, I don't really have any puckers. And then now where the elastic goes, you're gonna take that apart and you're gonna leave this up and you're just gonna connect. See this where they stop being all connected. So that's where I'm gonna sew. I'm gonna sew right from there. And you're gonna put the needle in and a back stitch, and you're just going to sew this bottom part all the way to where it's connected here. I can see it stops right there. Now, you get a piece of elastic. Oops. opening is about that big of course I want my elastic shorter so it scrunches up so I'll just take a little bit off and you slip it in wherever you stopped that stitching right there I'm gonna put the elastic further in just a little bit I'm gonna turn it over I'm going to feel underneath where the edge is I'm gonna go once I'm gonna go over a quarter inch. I'm gonna go twice. That's enough to hold the elastic in place. Then I'm going to pull the elastic in more until it starts to scrunch. And I know that that's how much give I have. And you can kind of just eyeball it. And once you start making them more and more and more, you're gonna be able to, I wanna cut some of this off because it's too long. You're gonna be able to just kind of know for yourself. Up and back once, up and back twice. Now, you're gonna stretch it out, because remember it's gathered. And you're gonna put one pin in the middle, 
and then you're going to close it up. So go back to where your original stitching stopped, back stitch a little bit, and as I'm sewing this time, I want to pull, pull my pin out, pull, and match back up with my original stitching, which is right there. Then what I'm going to do, because your beret is finished now, or tam, whatever, is I'm going to serge all around here. And then I'm going to edge stitch again. I'm going to put the um, seam allowances up toward this middle part. And then I'm going to edge stitch all around. I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to make sure the seam allowances go up this way. And I'm going to pull and I'm going to sew all along the edge. And then um, I'll be done. And so I don't know, that was what, 15 minutes or so? And then you have a quick tan. And if you decide to, the beautiful thing about sewing is you can um, make some pants in an hour, hour and a half, a tam. You can probably just add another 15 minutes to that. Wear it with different tunics that you have or different jackets. And that's how you begin to build your wardrobe. Um, just making um, some pieces with matching scarves or hats or whatever. And then as your wardrobe builds, you'll have more confidence and you'll start uh, trying more jackets and more things that are more difficult. So I hope the video helped with how to make a tam or beret or whatever we want to call it, um, a head covering. I wish you much success in all your endeavors. If you have any questions, always feel free to uh, message me on Facebook or my um, YouTube page or my phone number, however you want to reach me, is fine. I sound like